Good afternoon, everyone, uh, and welcome to another session at LitFest X Day 2. We've got the very young and talented Meenakshi Reddy Madhavan with us. Uh, you know, very interestingly, she says that she has been writing ever since she first learned how to write, and she's been telling stories from way before that. Uh, Meenakshi is the author of five books. Uh, and most of them have done really, really well. Um, she's a travel buff. She has uh, a great penchant for reading. And Minakshi, if I'm not correct, you have three cats, is it? Yeah, three. I've right. kicked them all out of this room, though, so they won't interrupt us. <laughs> OK, great. So great to have you uh, on LitFest X, Minakshi. Thank you. Thank you. Great to be here. It's very kind of you to say I'm young as well. I feel very old today. Oh. <laughs> I, I hope I've got nothing to do with that, you know, <laughs> being in a festival yeah. only. So, so um, you know, uh, Minakshi, uh, the, the topic, as you know, for uh, today's session is uh, digital media and short fiction. Okay. And uh, we'd like to discuss with you, uh, you know, where do you see the convergence and the opportunity for uh, short fiction to leverage the digital media uh, platform? And uh, how have you seen that uh, sort of evolving over time? Well, I, I think that the two can go really hand in hand because uh, if you look at the, some of the places that already are exploring using fiction online, like Reddit has these like creepy stories and you know two line sentence stories, and flash fiction has been around for quite some time. I remember even when I was in college, it was like a game saying you write a five hundred word story and you know you can win a prize or whatever. So when brevity is the nature of the game, I think it makes more sense for it to go online even more. So I think we'll, see, we'll be seeing a lot more Twitter stories or Instagram novels. I, I just read about an artist doing an Instagram novel in fact the other day. Or, uh, you know, stuff, so Facebook, this evolving Facebook posts that, that basically deal with uh, fiction in general. So I think the two are like, I think they're made for each other basically. So, you know, interesting you say that, you know, shorter stuff is more apt for um, online audiences. I mean, on one hand, you know, you've got Twitter with, uh, you know, 140 character limits. And, uh, you know, that platform is really doing well. Um, you know, what do you feel then is the antithesis to that? You know, on you know, one hand, people have really taken up to a platform which is so short. Uh, in terms of its ability to, uh, you know, cram in content in, you know, in one piece. And, right. and then you're looking at, you know, uh, short fiction. Uh, so how short is short, you know? Well, anywhere between, uh, anything that can fit on your phone screen that you can read comfortably. Now, um, I think the antithesis to Twitter is actually the blog, which is dying, as you know, or already dead. I think people have been calling the blog dying or dead for some time. But then off late, I've been seeing a revival of the long form essays. People are like really like talking about their lives and their past and stuff. So maybe it's a kind of blogging again. Maybe just not hosted on their own blog. They hosted on like BuzzFeed, Long Reads, or you know, longreads.com or whatever. Uh, and that also fits comfortably on a phone. For a very long time, I didn't have a laptop and I was doing all my reading on the phone. And I noticed as long as things like were visually appealing and were able to like scroll, I didn't have to keep click clicking different pages and it, you know, it, it got the right size for me. I was reading it. I mean, I wouldn't read a novel, but I could read, say, easily a 5,000 word piece on my phone without diary. Okay. Okay. And, um, you know, with, uh, we've just recently seen the, the launch of a mobile first uh, publishing uh, company. Yeah. You know, it's been in the news. What is your view uh, on that? On, I mean, not just mobile publishing, but like you mentioned, you've been reading on the phone. So do you, do you see uh, more and more content and books uh, specifically being created to be read on the small screen? And what does it mean for writers then? Well, it's not a new thing, putting stuff on the phone or like the iPad, because kids' books have been doing it for a while. So a lot of kids' books are coming out on the iPad where, you, where the child can actually interact with the characters. If you press one character and make a noise, you know, you can hunt for things within the page and you press it. It basically interacts with you. So since children's books have been doing it for a while, I guess it was only a matter of time before adult books uh, came along. I also read about this other app recently that's been launched in the States. It's also fiction on your phone. But it's going to be made in like different formats. It's going to be made like 
you know, one day you'll, you'll swipe through and you'll see a WhatsApp conversation. The next day you'll see like something else and so on and so forth. So I guess if you gave the reader incentive to read it, made it like a game a bit. Um, so, you know, you can do all sorts of like fun things with it. Like maybe you want to discover hidden dialogue, which a normal reader won't find. You tap on it. Uh, JK Rowling is doing this with her website, Pottermore. So every time you like uncover rewards within the Pottermore website, you find new stories. And it, it's, it's quite nice because if you're like talented enough to find these rewards or, you know, talented or a gamer enough to find these rewards, then you're actually un, uh, revealing stuff, which is, which is working for you. So maybe if, if fiction was working more like a game, but I don't know how that would work on a traditional level. I don't know how it works for like writers, even I like myself, where you don't know how to make a book any different from beginning, middle and end. How do you do all the little, little, you know, secret extra Easter egg type things to make your reader more engaged? I think it'd be, it'd be very interesting to see what happens next. And, and then do you think the, the role of the author is more than just writing. I mean, uh, don't you think then authors will have to, like you said, think beyond the, you know, the beginning, middle, and the end. Think beyond the plot. Think beyond the characters, and really get into uh, sort of entertainment mode, if you will. Definitely, and I think that some writers are already doing it. Um, I remember famously Chetan Bhagat saying on a panel, uh, "I'm not competing with other authors. I'm competing with Candy Crush." Now, if, if Jaden Bhagat has figured it out, I think maybe that that's, that's the way that we should also be going because books in the end are entertainment, right? Uh, but I don't know how much a traditional model. There will always be people who love books, I think. And ebook sales are falling right now, and new paper books are coming back into vogue. So I think there will be room for both kinds of writers. I think there are the kind of writers who can do the stuff that, that go on the mobile phone and that you can, you can have a lot of fun with. And there will be the kind of writers who you can just read straightforward. You know, on a plane, you just read a book. And you're, you're good. You know, there's um, a lot of publishers or, uh, you know, otherwise people also say that uh, books which are just purely on short stories haven't traditionally done too well. I mean, there are a few exceptions. But uh, do you see that changing with the digital platform? I certainly hope so. I have a new collection out right now. It's called Before and Then After. And uh, I'm hoping that the, the shortness of it will kind of appeal to my readers' attention spans at this point. Not not like a dissing to any of my readers if they're, they're watching this. I'm sure you guys are all great. But uh, I just feel like, I feel like it's only obvious that we're going to move towards a short story. Because, I mean, you have like that many hours in your day. You have you're going to work, you're like sitting in a coffee shop waiting for someone and shorter fiction in takes out less of your time than a novel because you can just pick it up, you can open it to any chapter you like and you can read, you don't have to like go from beginning to end or anything and I think that there should be a way, I think right now we're working on trying to find the reader who wants this because short stories get a bad rep because you know they're not as involved as a novel. Um, so if you fall in love with the character, you basically you, you lose the character at the end of the pages. After eight pages, your character is gone, like bye bye. Um, so I think that's why it's been hard to market all this while. But I think if, if we can tap into today's restless generation where you can only do like things in like short bursts, or maybe you're reading five books at the same time, you don't have the attention span to stay in with one. Uh, I think that might work. I mean, fingers crossed. I'm only doing what I can. No, I'm sure. I'm sure it could work. Tell us a little bit more about, uh, you know, the title you mentioned. Uh, before and then after is a, is a collection of stories. Actually, I, I went up to the hills uh, in September of 2012, I think, to do some writing. And I wrote a couple of short stories there. And I came back down and I wrote a third novel. And the short story just lay in my hard drive for a while. And uh, about a year ago, I was sifting through it and cleaning it up. And I came across these stories. And I was like, you know, these have actually stood the test of time. I think they stood pretty good. So I, I sent them off I, you know, to see what would happen and um, I got an offer for them. It was also surprising because, you know, short stories don't sell. So I wrote a few more and it was, it was really actually kind of amazing. It's, I think it's become one of my favorite things to do. I, I don't think it's going to be the last uh, collection I do. And how many, how many stories in this uh, collection? Um, I think 11. Sorry, I, I should know. I, remember not, I don't have a book actually next to me right now. So I think it, it, it's definitely. Not a problem. I think your fans and readers can always buy a copy of the book uh, to know more. 
it's also on Kindle for a low, low price. So, hey. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, tell me, uh, have you experimented with uh, podcasts for uh, storytelling? Not yet. I've been thinking about it for a long time, but I, I, I hear it involves like getting a mic and getting headphones and stuff. And anything that involves buying new equipment, my mother taught me, was a bad idea. She's like, you're going to buy it and you're never going to use it again. So that's why I never learned how to play a sport or a musical instrument because this was my mother's idea. Actually, she was kind of right because I lost interest very fast. <laughs> But thank, thankfully, you had the pen, so we've got a great writer uh, because you did uh, have the equipment of a pen, right? I know. So uh, you know, um, you know, uh, you. I mean, short stories, but serial ones is not a new idea. And uh, you know, what is your experience and view on sort of the most sort of uh, serial stories? Um. It would be, I've been, I've been thinking of a serial podcast, in fact, the other day, because I've been listening to a lot of podcasts lately. There's one particularly called Line Town that's come out, which, which is different from serial. I don't know whether you've heard of serial, but it was like a non-fiction investigative report about a case that was closed in America a long time ago. And this journalist uh, decided that she wanted to reopen it and reinvestigate. Now, Line Town is similar, except it's all fiction. So I've been, we went on a long road trip recently to the hills where we were listening to like three or four episodes of Line Town back to back. And it was really great, that format, because... You're actually like waiting for more. And uh, Charles Dickens used to do the same thing back in the day. And Alexander McCall Smith did it much more recently with his uh, detective agency books. I think they were all like serial stories. So you have to wait for the next one. Um, as long as they're all uploaded somewhere, I guess, so people who have missed the last few can go back and read. Um, I think it would be a great idea. Right. Um, maybe we can, at this point in time, just uh, taking a few questions. I'm seeing a few coming up on Twitter right now. Um, let's take sure. a few of those and then we'll come back to this discussion. Um, so there's someone, I think one of your current readers, uh, uh, Shivangi, she wants to know, tell us about the soul of your last book, The Life and Times of Layla. The ordinary. The, uh, the what of my last book? The soul. Oh, the soul. Oh, well, um, when I was uh, 16, I had a best friend, I guess. She's still my best friend to this day. And um, I noticed then that we didn't have any books about people like us. We, I mean, we read a lot of Judy Bloom and we read like Sweet Valley High and stuff like that. But um, there was nothing but like being a regular Indian teenager doing regular things without anything to worry about beyond popularity or boys or maybe failing an exam or something. And when I thought about doing young adult, which is actually very dear to my heart, I pulled out all my diaries, which I still have. I, I was a massive journalist from the time I was about 11 or 10. And I looked at my journals from that period and I was like, well, I may have been 16, but I was totally obsessed with like three or four things. And let me put that down in a book and See what happens there. I mean, I always have the problem with young adult writing, a lot of young adult writing, the people talk down to children. And I feel that in order to write about a 16 year old, you have to actually feel like you're 16 inside your head. So I guess that's the soul, pretending like you're 16. Very interesting. Um, the next question is uh, from Ramana, who wants to know what makes love the most important and central character to your books? I'm just so obsessed with like people's relationships. I just I love to pick them apart. My favorite question to ask people at a party is, how did you guys meet? So, and once I, and, and you know, people will say, oh, we met through a friend, but if you like wait and you probe a little bit, there's so much more to that story. And I just, I love to unravel that. Sometimes I like to sit back and like watch people and see what makes them tick. And move. I, I don't know. I, I think if I hadn't been a writer, I'd probably be a psychologist. I just love the human mind and how it works. And so the part of the mind that you're trying to figure out is uh, relationships and love. Yes, exactly. Great, great. The, the next question we have is uh, from Anita Desai. She says, uh, what is your source of inspiration and picking stories in daily life? Well, for, for most of the stories, I, it usually happens like some kind of moment where um, 
I'm, I'm just sitting somewhere and I, and I suddenly have a thought and the thought comes and I thought, I'm like, hmm, that would make a really interesting story. So then I make a note of it and then I, I, I turn, turn it over in my head like I'm turning over a pebble or something until it's completely rounded and I'm thinking, okay, what's the first line for the story? And usually when I can come up with the first line, I know the story is a keeper and when I can't, I know I have been digit. So basically it's basically sitting somewhere, traveling really helps. So when I'm like looking out the window of a train or a plane or a bus, that, that's when a lot of my, my thoughts come to me. So, so which is why you uh, mentioned as well earlier that you are a travel buff. I do. I love traveling. So, so you're traveling for travel or you're traveling so that you can think and write? I am basically traveling so I can find new stories. I'm like a vulture. I'm waiting to meet new people. I think I've exhausted my friends group over here. I need to go somewhere else, find more people and ask them how they met their lovers. You can probably do a, a lot of that online now, virtually. I know, but I don't, I don't know enough from online. I need to watch their faces and look at their eyes and do things like that. Interesting, interesting. Let's, let's uh, you know, come back to a little bit about, uh, you know, what uh, we were discussing earlier. You know, um, you know in terms of, uh, you know, marketing, uh, you know, you've obviously dabbled with uh, both, you know, uh, short stories as well as novels. You know, what has been your experience uh, in trying to, A, marketing the manuscript, I would say first, you know, in terms of getting it published and then B, you know, on publishing, what have you found easier to sort of go out there and get audiences and readers for? I'm still trying to figure out audiences because Times have changed a lot since I published my first book to now. My first book came out, it was still like a very new time for Indian publishing. So commercial fiction was this brand new thing. Women who wrote about dating and relationships was a brand new thing. So I didn't really have to do much. I could just coast along on, on that kind of success. And now, seven years later, I'm thinking, okay, what can I do to appeal to these? How can I expand my readership from what I already have to get people who maybe did not know of me in the like seven years ago. A lot of my readers, I'm happy to say, have stayed with me from book one to like, I hope all the way up to now. But I do want to like meet new people, as they say. As for publishing, uh, pitching a book, it's basically as simple as writing a good synopsis. If you're excited about your synopsis, you write a good one and you explain to the publisher when you write a cover letter saying, this is how I think it will sell, this is the marketing I think we should do for it. They usually, uh, they're usually pretty happy. Right. So you're not, you're not seeing like a big distinction between uh, marketing of either of the, uh, you know, between a novel or short stories. You're not seeing a major difference. It's early days to my short stories right now. Literally, I just got the author copies, I think, three days ago. So yeah. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm hoping to try a few things, including this Instagram short story thing. So maybe I'll, I'll put like a story on Instagram, which is like using photos. I use Instagram a lot. Um, so maybe that'll help. I'm, I'm trying to experiment with a whole bunch of things right now. Right, right, right. How, how is it that, um, you know, uh, on your new title, how is it the stories are uh, sort of strung together? Is there a, is there a strong underlying theme? Or uh, are they just, you know, very... No, they, they're about relationships. They're about urban India, but they're also about all sorts of things. Um, there's not really anything that ties them together more than being, they, they began, all began as notes and post-its like spread across, like uh, what happened to Michael Jackson's kids, for example, turned into a story where a reclusive music star in India who dies and then his daughter has to basically figure out what's happening in the world. Or um, I wrote a story about cats. So, but they're all set in cities. So I guess maybe, maybe that helps. The, the right. city is a central, central theme. So, the, so it's, it's more... Uh you know, urban narratives. Exactly. With a mermaid thrown in for good measure. <laughs> that, that should be interesting. That should be interesting. I'm sure, uh, you know, people will have, have um, you know, something to look forward to. Uh, yeah, I hope so. A little bit of a twist you're throwing in there. Um, maybe we can take a, a question or two more. Uh, you know, we've got, you know, one coming up which says, uh, when you were writing these stories, what were 
some of your most enjoyable moments? Well, um, it was really fun writing some one of the most spooky stories, I think, because I managed to creep myself out. And I was like, oh, oh my God, I can't. There's a, basically, it's not give away too much. A girl opens the door one day and finds her best friend at the door, except her best friend's been dead for 12 years. Ooh. Wow. Yeah, exactly. So that was fun because I got experiments with like dystopia and like ghosts and stuff like that. That was really fun. Um, writing from a, a man's point of view, as I've done a few times, was also really fun because I had to get into the head of a man without sounding like womanish, without making him a womanish man. I wanted to make him like the kind of man that I, I maybe encounter or something. So that was interesting, getting into someone's head. Uh, doing the cat story was very fun because obviously I got to imagine myself as a cat. So I had to like follow my cats around for several days, more so than usual, and make notes of how they moved and maybe think of what they thought. So we make little cat thoughts up for them. So this, this experimenting with different genres, I think, was my favorite part. Great, very, very interesting. So you did, you did get to sort of dabble with a variety of uh, subjects within exactly. these uh, stories for this book. Yeah. You know, we've got one more question coming up before we sort of uh, wind up the session. Um, you know, it says, what do you feel about the state of aspiring authors in India? Do you think festivals, okay, this is a good plug for us. It says, do you think festivals like Litfest X would help their cause? Um, I think that there are so many thousands of books coming out right now, which is probably great for aspiring authors because I think that if you have a strong enough idea and a good enough editor, you could probably produce a good book. But I think that festivals like this one had draw attention to, to your book in particular. So I think I think it's great. Have you got our aspiring authors in your uh, in your sessions? Uh, not too many. Not many. Maybe next year then. Yeah, maybe next time. Certainly, certainly. And um, you know, in closing, let me ask you. Um, you know, since you said the your latest book has just arrived, uh, you know, a few days ago, um, what message would you like to leave for prospective readers about it, um, so that they can rush to the ebook store and buy it? It's. I think it's really fun. I, I'm not going to say, say any more than that. I think if you want, if you want a fun read with like 12 completely different stories and if you like to think about relationships and people and cities i think it's a good book to buy lovely lovely and uh, so thank you so much uh, meenakshi for thank joining you. us uh, it was fun uh, chatting with you and understanding how you're uh, you know tackling different genres uh, of writing from fiction novels to short stories and you're having clearly having fun doing that uh, and we wish you all the luck uh, with your new book and uh, we, we, we hope to see it on uh, you know bestseller lists very soon from your lips to god's ears okay great thank you so much great to all have right. you with us